It was just like there's a whole bunch of junk there. So, you know, it, it takes the power of the Holy Ghost to really focus it, focus it in. What do I need to do in each each service or, or setting I'm in? You know, because immediately sometimes God can just change a setting just like that. And we feel the transition coming on us, and we really don't want to transition. Because now it's our flesh. It's a Hagar thing. Hagar's in there, and she's working. Why get rid of her? But then after, like, how many years? Okay, this thing ain't working no more. This thing's got to go. You know, become jealous of that thing because that's not work. That's not right. That's No, that's got to go now. And so you ask the whole, God, you got to move it out. Move it out there, move it out of me, move it out here. Something. Something's got to give. I don't know if you ever watched that movie, Something's Got to Give. It is a good movie. Something's got to give. And Jane, I watched in Indianapolis. We must have watched it 50 times. I mean, I don't know why. There's something about that movie we both like. But we were at the time where something had to give. This is not right. I'm not living here. This is like a place of death. I mean, gone. We're out of here. But we're still watching that movie. Something's got to give. <laughs> something's got to give. And you know what? Something did give. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like how I liked it to be, nor how I wanted it to be. And it was a drama thing. You know, I was part of the drama queen thing too. You know what I'm saying? Because we always got to put our two cents in there. But bless God, God works out where you are going to be at the right place at the right time. Thank God for it. But I was reading Psalms 58. Yeah, if you want to go there real fast, it's amazing how Pastor was talking about um, his thing about the mouth today, or his tongue. Talking about the tongue. And um, yeah, it's it's unruly. I tell you, I've had many many issues with it. As a matter of fact, I mean, just to tell you. But let, let this be a secret. Don't let anybody in the world know about this. I mean, how could they possibly know it on the internet? But when I was younger, they used to have these like, um, were they, they had them in the cars and the trucks. Oh, they probably still have them. The three-way radios, something like that. CB. The CB, yeah. Like my hand was moldy mouth Margaret. I mean, that wasn't my name. CBs, because I was so nasty on there. You know, like they, they blurred out. The truckers, they did not want to hear women. It's like that was it. I mean, you know, starting in the like 70s and 80s, it came away from it, but like before that, in the 60s, oh no. And you know what? Like, I was offended. How dare you? Anybody's got freeway on the airways, blah, 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 blah. I said, blah, blah, blah. I'd go blah, 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 you know? It's like, why even bother? Like, I thought I was going to change somebody by, you know, blurting back them what they were blurting to me. And at that time, I was using like, Season words, you know what I'm saying? Thank God he's cleaning me up. And you know, every now and again it comes into my mind. I'm not saying it'll come into your mind too. And we just about almost the devil is like, no, that you know, that that little sister is dead. Now I'm keeping her dead, you know what I'm saying? Oh no, Jesus, he's still working on us. There was today, Psalms 57 Be merciful unto me, O Lord, be merciful unto me, for thy my soul trusts in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge, that's Psalms 57, 1. Until these calamities overpass. Sometimes we want these calamities to overpass us. God, please have mercy on me. I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know what to do. I don't know what you're doing in it. And I want to make sure I'm reacting right. We want to, we want to be, we really want to be right, right, but we start to go in this religious thing. You know how the religious people, they had the stone in front of Lazarus' grave? But it took them to move that stone away. You know, Jesus, when Jesus called them, move the stone away. He told them to move the stone away. That stone is religion. Sometimes when we get so religious, you know, we don't want to be real because then we, we don't want to come out of the character of who we think, perceive God is and who we want to portray God to be as us. But meanwhile, our current character is not even close to that at all. So we're not even right. We're not even reacting right. We're like, how could that, how could the Spirit of the Lord be resting upon me when I'm like that? Because he's doing a work. He's working a work. And sometimes it takes a long time for work. But then sometimes he's cutting that thing short and righteous. Next thing you know, boom. Wow, I would have reacted like that, but now I didn't. Hooray. You know, hooray. Or they did. You know, because we're perceiving things. We're seeing things on the outside and on the inside. Verse 4, my soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue is sharp sword. Be thou, O oh, Exalted, O oh God, above the heavens, let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul bowed down. They have digged a pit before me. Into the midst thereof are they fallen themselves. And a lot of times people are digging. Now, we now are gotten to the, have gotten to the place in God where we have gotten to the secret place of the Most High. 
the world can't touch us, or really the people, you know, in the church that don't understand, they really can't touch us either. But a lot of times we see the world now falling into those pits. They're falling into the nets. You know, they're wicked and vicious and evil men and women that really have set out against God's people. And you're seeing it so much now on the headlines. You're seeing where they're just, I mean, it took prayer out of the school. That was back in my day, you know, back in the 60s. But now, I mean, they are just flat out killing people. They flat out, they're not even making issues with nothing. They're just all flogged out, you know. So we know we're to the place of a climax. But see, also at that place where it's the darkest, we're going to be the brightest lights. And now is not the time to have any doubt, fear, and unbelief about where you're going to God because you're there. And in a moment's notice, he, Joseph went from the pit to the palace in one day. He can supernaturally finish that work, and all of a sudden, when you put the, the, the little cherry on top of the cake, and even, you know what, when you put the, mount that cake with the layers and everything looks smooth on the outside, still not finished, still put the circle on top and the bottom, it's still not polished off when you put the cherry on top, then it is what it is. So God's about to put the cherry on top of us. And all that stuff, it just it just pulls it all up out. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing how supernatural God can do a fast, quick work in us and we give him our permission because we want that. It's, it's calling us into that place. We've come into that place. We've come into the secret place of the Most High. We're in that secret place with him all the time. We are not out of the Spirit. We're in the Spirit. And we're being transported even now. God's taken us to another place, another dimension in him. And even as we sit and rest, God is moving in through us. He's moving. He is moving for us with angelic host. But uh, I want to go to actually, while well, time doesn't pass for us uh, quickly, Mark 1. And that's just some things that you need to um, study on how that God, at times you're, you're going to go through these little ups and downs, these roller coaster things. You know, one minute you're up, the next minute you're down. But a lot of times it was worse before, but now it's an easy thing because there's things that actually come against us. And we don't understand, but actually God's changing your character. God's changing our character into his character. And now we, we become that love for somebody else. And they're seeing where we used to be like one thing, and now we're like this. They know it was God that had done that thing. So, you know, they can cheer us on. They can come to that place and, and, and celebrate us. Celebrate us into where we're going in God. And we're celebrating each other. We're celebrating every day because God's doing such a quick, great work, and I love it. But I know you like to read Mark a lot because there's many, many... Um, dimensions in it. But verse 38, we find Jesus. He's torn Galilee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also for therefore came I forth. We have come forth to this time and dimension in our life but we are going to be sent to the nations. God is preparing you to go to different places at different times. And all you have to do is release yourself. Nothing is going to hold you back because you were preordained predestined for a certain place at a certain time to win souls. We're, we're all about souls, souls, souls. And all he's done is a work, a work in us, a dramatic work in us, framing those things mm -hmm. and so that we can have more compassion on more people. Mm -hmm. It's just been a compassion thing for us, you know. But we didn't look at it like it was compassion at the time because our flesh was trying to see it. But see, our spirit man actually was seeing what was going on. And, and who knows? The Spirit knows all things, and the Spirit of the Lord teaches us by way of the Holy Spirit. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out 